Right, yeah, guys. So it is now time to do the rear brake line on uh, on Max the DR650. If you saw the last video, I did the the front one. I had a lot of trouble with uh, bleeding the brakes just using that new vacuum thing. A lot of people said about, um, yeah, that's great for cars, but because a, a motorcycle has such a small amount of fluid that as people that watched it saw I was chasing my bloody tail and I kept running the reserve out and oh what a pain but I got the job done I went out for a ride today with um, Hal um, he's got a DR650 and we did a bit of a crossover I didn't do any uh, video footage of that I might actually have some footage here that because um, he did a bit of footage uh, yeah and testing so the brakes the brakes were fantastic even Hal said that the brakes were really really good he was impressed with uh, how non-spongy and responsive that they were so I thought that was pretty good so now we've got to get bloody this I think I've got to get that I've got to get the reserved up here right I might give that a clean up boom with a bit of magic there you go all nicely cleaned up there's that master cylinder duvalaki. So as with the front, so that's a master cylinder there, but the, res the actual fluid is held up in a reserve up there, and then just has this pipe come down to there. So that's the banjo joint there. The, uh, the, the hose goes up, curls back down, and then runs down along here to this banjo. So it looks and feels, hopefully that's not too tricky just to run that uh, that one through there. I, th I think it feels all right. I should be able to manage that. No worries. Um, yeah, everything's cleaned up. So now I've just got to, can you, yeah, up there. If I undo that bolt, hopefully I don't have to take this tank off and I can just kind of manipulate this out here without taking all that, which means the side cover, the seat, the tank, I've got it all wired up, blah, blah, blah. Okay, 10 mil bloody bolt here. We should just have to undo that. There we go. So what do we got? We've got a little... I wonder what that's... What's the purpose of that? Oh, I know what the purpose of that is. That there holds that, stops that lid from undoing, possibly. Maybe, perhaps. I think that's what it must do. Yep, cool. Right, so that... I reckon, yeah, that should work. I can work with that. If I have that poking out there like that, I'll just strap that or prop it somehow. Yeah, all right, hang on. Okay, guys, so I've got that. That's pretty stable looking there. I'll just zoom you in. I've put a bolt there just to help stabilize it and a uh, zip tie around the frame, and that looks pretty pretty good. That should hold. Um, so I've just got to undo that. See what comes out of that. So we've got a cap, and a little rubber doodad, and some oil. Well, I reckon that oil looks a little bit better than what the, uh, the front one was, but definitely need a change because that is the stock fluid, 2009 DRZ, DRZ, oh, it's a DRZ 400 mark. Jesus, Max is going to kick me with his back bloody tyre. Um, DR650, yeah, 2009, that's how long it's been in there. Right, yeah, guys, so I've got you so you can see that. So hopefully you're going to see that drain down. I am going to use this thing. Obviously, I think, you know, everybody's saying it's for a car, not for a bike. I'm going to just try and use it and see if I can use it in such a way that it can work for a motorbike. Because I, like, I, like, I liked how it worked, apart from it being a pain in the ass. <laughs> right, so crack that open. So the object of the game here is just to drain all the fluid out. All right, now let's see if it sucks stuff out. And should see that coming down. Ooh. 
Right, so that's emptied that reserve and hopefully it's pulled all the, ho all the fluid in the hose out and whatever's in that caliper. Um, there you go, cool. So I'll clean all that out and then we'll pull this hose off. Righto guys, I've just put those two screws in to make sure that's solid so that when I get this off, this hose has to come out of there. Oh, so they're still all right, they're not brittle, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, now let's get this off. Oh wow, that's, that's a lot of force on there. So what I might do is just do the tappy tap instead of just trying to reef it. Cause I don't, I don't want to bust that. I'm sure I won't, but as we know, tappy taps um, can be a lot better at breaking the first bit of bite. There you go, I reckon we got it. And there was hardly any flex like when I was doing it before. Nice, now are we gonna get any runoff? Oh well, let's find out. Right, one crossed crush washer. One banjo. There should be a crush washer there as well, which there is, but we've got replacement ones of these. Right, oh, so this, I hope, is just gonna pull out. Is that what's gonna happen? It is too, look at that. Brilliant. Now we just get this end off. We might be cooking. And I'll do the old tappy tap. Beautiful, love the tappy tap. Oh, that's in a bloody, uh, shitty position. So, so far, no oil uh, fluid has come out, which is good. Less mess. If this, look, <laughs> if this looks awkward, hang on, I'll get you closer. The, uh, it's just in a real awkward, oh, here we go, now it's gonna go, now that I've got you guys closer. Oh. All right, there's a bit of fluid there. Not that bloody crap up. And normally what that is, it's whatever's in the, in the actual bolt, I think. Come on, oh, it's gonna fight me right to the end, this thing. Here we go. Beauty, all bits and pieces. Two washers either side, brilliant. Right, I'll have a clean up. Looking good. Rightio, so before we start putting all this stuff together, guys, what have I got? There it is, that is the rear steel braided brake line. Um, it's by, was it Gelfa? Get a couple of bloody stickers with it. I've got the new banjo bolts that come with it and all the crushed crush washer, copper crush washer things. Here is the uh, doodad, let's make sure you get that in focus. And then that on the back there. If you, I tell, so I got the front and the rear, it was just under $200, including shipping. Got it from Australian Adventure Bikes, Australian Adventure Bikes, where I had it there. I, here's that video that I did, the last video, if you want any of that, all the information about this stuff and why you use a braided one over just the normal ones, it's all in that other video. Let's just get and install this. Actually guys, I just wanna, I just noticed something and I wanna show you. So here is, we've got that all in frame, yep. So that's the old one. I was just looking and I noticed on this side here, there seems to be more of a bend than on this one. And this says here, master cylinder. So that's gonna go that end, because we know that curl there, that goes to the master cylinder there. So if we put that like that, yeah, you see that bend? It's not as, yeah, I don't know, whatever. So if we keep that there, 
follow this around. See how much shorter that is? I don't think it's gonna be a problem because there's a fair amount, like it just means that, yeah, I think it's gonna be fine, but I just wanted to point that out to you guys. Right, eh? Okay, guys, so this apparently is this side here, and I'm that looks pretty good like that. It's gonna go like that. I can't have it go that way because that's just stupid. That won't work, so it has to go like that. Brilliant. Right, let's get it on. So, banjo bolt, either end is identical. Work that in there. Washer on the other end. And how did I say? I went like that. Okay, let's see if I can get this in because this is a real shitty spot. So it'd be much easier to do this with the um, caliper off the bike, but... Oh, what I'll do, guys, is let me come back to you. This is just going to... I'm going to be all in your way. Hang on. Rightio, that one is on. I saved you watching me tediously inching it, trying to... Got it, it's all on. You can do it without having to take the caliper off. It would be a whole lot easier if you took the caliper, blah, blah, whatever. Right, I'm gonna rip this little label off because now it can I know exactly the where it's going. Oh, why did I rip that off so terribly? Cool. That's then gonna feed. I'll bring you over closer, hang on. That's gonna feed into there. Uh, I mean, actual fact, shit, no, I should have, hang on. Bring you guys back out a little bit. See the whole picture? I'll get that out. That's got to go in there. And then that's going to go on there. So that's, oh, what are we doing? I'm going to stay away from the spring. There's a little clamp, a little thing up there, but that's a fair way back which is not really going to hold that. So what I'm going to have to do, I might be able to show you guys in a minute, but I'm just going to get this on to start with, and then I'll show you what there might be a problem and we can fix it. So that should be close enough. So I've got a washer. Mark, put your short lookers on. Right, washer in through there. Another washer, chuck it on there, feed it in nicely. Looking good. And if we look in there, yeah, right, eh? Okay, tighten this down. What is it number 14? And I don't want that to. Right, but I don't want that thing to push up against that there. So we're just gonna tighten that down. I reckon that's heaps. Right, let me see if I can get you in there. Right here, guys, so you can see the banjo there. And then we follow that hose along. And then you can, can you see that hook? Uh, I can't get my finger to it to show up. You can see there's a piece of metal that's going out to the left and then swoops down. That hose isn't long enough to get caught in that little uh, latch or that little bloody hook. So I'm gonna have to put a tie. Uh, so it's just there. It, it, it doesn't, it feels like it doesn't even wanna go that way, but I'll just run a loop uh, of, have I got something here? Hang on. Rightio guys, see that there's that hose there, which is not, but it, it, I can move that backwards into the spring, which we don't want. So, oh, in actual fact, oh, it is very close to that hitting that loop, but I don't care, I don't feel happy enough. So what I'm gonna do is feed that through there. Put that on there. And it doesn't have to, I don't want it to be tight. I just want it just to tell it to not bloody uh, go, but so now it can't go back. Brilliant, I'll snip that off, 
turn that around and that'll be a job done. Beautiful. Okay, so now I just got to whack those in there. Nice. Now where is that? Oh, this is the bottom part sitting all right? Yeah, it is actually. I don't think that should worry with the... Oh, so that's why they have the loop. Of course they're going to have a loop there because of the suspension going up and down like that. It has to have that. Well, there you go, I learnt something. Brilliant. Right, we're ready to do the bleed. Put the bloody fluid in there. I've got a bit of pressure going on that. Let's see if I can do this by myself without Nay giving me a hand to bloody keep this topped up. So that's it. There's bubbles coming through that because obviously, oh, no, I haven't released this. So if I release this now, just see if that goes down without me pressing the button. I really want this to work um, for a motorcycle because it really is a handy thing. Um, having this higher than that, so I've just got a gotcha strap and it's got, actually got a little hook for actually doing that. So the, you should always have this higher than that. So keep, air, little air bubbles keep popping out of that. It's going down pretty fast now. We'll top that right back up. So I do not want to let that run down. Yeah, it's still going down. So let's just crack that open. It's staying pretty steady. So I'm being smart and I'm not, I'm not putting, pressing that button. There's nothing much happening down the bottom here. That's slowly going down. I'll just stop that. Give the old brake a bit of a push. That's going down. All air bubbles are still popping out of it. You won't be able to see that, I know. I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Careful not to have anything come out. And let me just give that one little swoosh and then release. There she, now she's starting to come. That's still going down. So I think this is the smart way to do it. It's just little by little. Whereas before I was just I was just sucking I was sucking it all through all the time. Let's quickly top that up a little bit more. Right. Choke it. Still air bubbles popping through. Release it. I'll just give that a bit of a squirt. Bit more pressure there you go yeah so now she's starting to now it's starting to take i'm getting air and oil i keep saying oil i know it's fluid keep an eye on that hopefully you can see that if i do a close-up for you i might just stop that for a minute Give that, still more air bubbles popping up through there. Get that topped back up again. <coughs> it's a lot easier too, is this recording? <laughs> Sometimes I forget, am I still, you guys still there? Um, a lot easier instead of when I was doing the front, I'd have to get up, walk around and then go and have a look. Whereas here I can do the whole thing in one. And you get a little impatient. All right, let's just crack that open. Lots of air bubbles coming through with the fluid looking really good. 
So, so far, this is looking pretty good, guys. As in being able to use this little machine. As that fluid's going down, we'll just crack that first. Uncrack it, I mean, we'll stop it. Fill that back up. What I'm gonna do is get you down closer here. See how there's air bubbles coming out? And this is actually off. So that's telling me that that is leaking air through that connection. It doesn't have a good connection. Whereas on the front, it did actually have a good connection. Right, let's just crack this open and see what happens. So now we're actually getting, so that's coming out of the system, all those bubbles. And I'm keeping an eye on that reservoir, guys, don't you worry. I'm not gonna let that bloody thing uh, run all the way down. Just keep that like that. We'll give the pedal, oh. Crack that. I say crack it and shut it. I should say shut and open. All right, a bit more, I'm putting a bit more fluid in, only a little tiny little bit, just, I just wanna make sure I don't go down too far. Right, crack it and see what comes out. See, now we're not getting any, no air bubbles. So I reckon, just fully open it. I reckon that's a done deal, guys. That's it. Shut that off. Um, so I shut that off. What do I got to do now? I'll just give the brake a bit of a push. No air bubbles coming out of the reservoir. There was nothing coming out of there. So, I'll bring you guys around. Right, so I think that worked. That worked, I was able to do it by myself. Now hang on, I, I, can't, I don't, can't have that too full. Where's my little cap? Because that's gonna, that'll push. Yeah, that's gonna push. Oh, is that, that's too full. Is that too full? That won't, that won't squash down any further, will it? Or will it? Will it squ no, that's it. That's the next piece that pops out. Uh, damn it. All right, one was. You still with me, guys? Yep. Yeah. I'll just do that. And if whatever pushes out, pushes out. It's a bloody DR. It doesn't care. There's no paintwork to worry about. Oh, there it goes. Hopefully that's not a problem being too full. Right, eh? Oh. All right, before I do anything, I just better make sure it all works. Right, let's see. I've got the stand there. Hey. Okay, the brakes aren't locked on, so that's, that's a good thing. Cool, so now, brilliant. So that's just the brake, uh, the back brake. Done. Right, eh? Just gotta put it all back to bloody together. Right, so I won't bore you with me just putting it all back together. All I've got to do is put the little nipple cover back on there. That is done. Take those two bolts out, whack that on, uh, snip that off, bolt that back in, get rid of that bolt there, and we are, that's it. That's a bloody job done. Cool, I'll see you in a minute. Right, hey guys, that's it. The uh, tools are all packed up. It's all back together. Still rolls. Still breaks. Excellent job done. Let's have a chat. Righty A. So now I didn't mention in the previous uh, video when I did the front, I just showed you that. That is dot four. They actually have dot four 
Plus. It's racing brake fluid. More than overkill on Max the DR650, but that's what I'm using. DR650s use dot four, so I'm putting the right shit in it. Now, as for this contraption, clearly it is set up, it is you know something that you would use on cars, but if you're not a dickhead like me um, and video yourself doing using this before you've even actually tested it, um, it it works for a motorcycle. You saw that, and if you have a look, like that's bugger all. Sorry, right there, that's bugger all wastage of uh, fluid. You can take open that up, pour it back in there. What do they call this? I was talking to Hal about it. Hyper, is it hyperscopic? Brake fluid is hyperscopic, so uh, moisture will get into the oil or something, I don't know, something like that. So that's why you're supposed to replace it um, because it deteriorates or does that hyperscopic bullshit or whatever, I don't know. Um, but having this hanging and this, this thing is higher than where your caliper is, where you're doing the bleeding, um, don't do it like I did the first time where I'm going and then just sucking shitloads of bloody fuel, um, fuel fluid through. Um, I just get a bit of go and then just let it, let it, let it, like, because it just creates a vacuum and it just slowly, slowly, which is all you need for a motorbike. So it worked for using it on a motorcycle. I'll use that again, that time just then. That's the best I've ever done when bleeding brakes on a motorcycle. I haven't done it a huge amount of times, most probably three, four times now, most probably on a few different bikes. Um, yeah, there you go. So hopefully you guys, um, if I've inspired someone to bloody give it a go, great stuff. Um, if I've entertained you, that's even better. Right, eh? Remember guys, keep on riding, and if you ain't riding, keep on keeping on.